All right, so we have one week left in the class after today. Uh, while you're hard at work on your renders for the final character presentation, I um, just wanted to kind of divert for a little bit and talk about some cloth simulation, which is fun. And when you have some time to actually add this to the render, I think it, it creates some really dynamic, can create some really dynamic scenes without having to you know, fully animate the character. So not that by any means you have to add this, but I wanted to show you how you could. So after the semester is over, as you're working on polishing your portfolios, you could always re-render your character with some sort of fabric simulation, a cape or a flag in the background or, you know, something of that nature. So uh, I'll show you a couple of different kind of applications for this cloth. I've got a new scene. Uh, I have gone to the FX, uh, menu set. So this is in uh, Maya 2016. It's also, I believe it's there in 2017. In 2015, I think it's called Dynamics. But Effects is what we want because it has this end cloth menu. Okay, it's got all of your uh, simulation uh, effects up there. So if we're going to create cloth, there's a couple things that we need. Go to my polygon shelf. First thing that we need is we need a mesh to be the fabric, right? So I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to scale it up, something like that. And then in my inputs, I'm going to set my subdivisions. I'm going to be aggressive and go with 50. And we want decent density because the way that the simulation works is it uses the vertices and the faces and it simulates each of those individually. So we need, we need enough detail for that to simulate. Okay, I'll move it up there. Uh, we also need something for this to uh, kind of interact with and collide with. Otherwise, it's just going to be a square piece of cloth that falls straight down and is, and is not going to look like cloth. So uh, sphere is kind of the default obvious choice. Now I'm going to move this sphere up to just below. I don't want them to intersect just below the uh, the cloth. Okay, so now I have, I'm actually going to scale it up a little bit too. Whoops. Scale it up a little bit, move it back down. There, okay. So now, to actually make this cloth, select it, you go up to the end cloth menu and say create end cloth. Now there are some options uh, here. Uh, the default local space out output is fine. Click create cloth, or you could just go straight to create end cloth. When you do that, uh, it we'll see in the outliner. It's plain. We now have an end cloth uh, node, and we have a nucleus, which is kind of environmental factors. Uh, if we go to the attribute editor, we can see in the cloth. Uh, we've got a ton of options. Dynamic properties, collisions, force field generation, wind field generation, pressure, quality settings, all sorts of stuff that you can really get into. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. Just, you know, once you get started here, just play around. That's kind of the most fun is just seeing what you can do. Um, but you also have presets. So in the attribute editor and right next to the name, you can click on the presets, and we've got a bunch of different things. So we have airbag, beach ball, burlap, um, honey, uh, silk. So obviously, we want to focus on the uh, fabrics. Uh, silk, rubber sheet, t-shirt, uh, heavy denim. You know, so we can go. We'll say silk and hit replace. Uh, and then we need to tell this sphere to be something that it can actually collide with. So when you create it, something, a uh, simulation with fabric or with particles, you need to, one, tell the object to be cloth, and two, you need to tell the things that it's going to collide with that they're something that it can actually collide with. Otherwise, Maya will ignore it when it does that calculation. So go to end cloth and create passive collider. Click on that. OK, you'll see in the outliner, it now says rigid. Okay, it's a rigid body, which means it will collide. Uh, and now we can just hit play. 
Now, it's you see the timeline is jumping all over the place, and this is barely moving. Uh, and that's because the playback is set to uh, play real time. And what we want it to be is play every frame, because it'll simulate then on every frame. So I'm going to go back to frame one, and I'm going to go to my animation settings and set that to play every frame. You can also just right click on the timeline, playback speed, and play every frame free. And then I'm going to hit play, and we'll watch it simulate. This uh, simulation is playing back. It's not playing back quite uh, real time, but we can definitely see. Yeah, we can see that this now looks like cloth. Uh, and this is the silk preset. We can see it's kind of flowy. Uh, we can also, I'm going to actually expand this out to uh, 200 frames. Uh, we can see the folds develop. We can see how it's forming around the ball. Uh, you'll also notice that this cloth will not intersect with itself. Like it's not going to go through itself. It will bounce off and deflect from itself. And actually, if you let this play back long enough, it will slip off the ball and fall to the ground because there's not a ton of friction here. Uh, so that's the that's the silk preset. You can also go to the, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, we've got like the heavy denim. I'll go back to frame one and we'll simulate that. Um, okay, that's, that's going to behave a little bit differently. Let's say you uh, you want just this mesh to be static. You don't need it to animate. You can then just duplicate that mesh, move it over, and now you've got this mesh that is fabric. Uh, you can whoops, get three of the number pads, smooth it out a little bit, you can light it however you want, and that's not going to animate because it's a duplicated object that doesn't have the dynamics applied to it. So that's, that's the really simple version. I encourage you to play around with it because it is a lot of fun just to kind of see what you can do. But you can take it a little bit further as well. Uh, and so that's what I want to do next. The thing that I want to show, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete all of that. Now obviously you can do a ton of searching on YouTube and find additional tips and tricks and all of that. Um, I'm going to add a plane, Oops. and I'm going to scale up the plane to be roughly the size and shape of a flag. Okay, something like that. Let's actually make that a little bit smaller. Okay, that's going to be a flag. Now we need to, again, subdivide this so it's plenty of uh, room there. And then I'm going to my object mode. I'm going to make this cloth. Okay, that's now cloth. And then if I just hit play, uh, there it goes. It just falls through the floor, and it falls through the floor because there's nothing for it to interact with, and there's nothing holding it up. Um, you know. One way we can give it something to interact with, and I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, uh, if we select our uh, nucleus, you see that little N at the origin of the scene, you can also just select it in the outliner. Uh, we've got ground plane here and say use plane. And basically you're, it's telling Maya when it simulates it that this grid acts like a ground. So now when I hit play, when it hits the ground, it interacts with it. Okay, and it, the fabric just kind of crumples on the ground. Which is cool, you don't actually have to add a ground plane and tell the ground plane to be a collider. You can just click that checkbox and it, and it figures it out. Um, but, we want this to be a flag that blows in the wind, so... Let's make that happen. Uh, first thing is we need the flag to stay put. So I'm going to go into vertex select mode, and I'm going to select the top two vertices and the bottom two vertices, and I'm going to go to uh, end cloth, and I got to remember where this is. 
let's see. The end constraint menu and transform constraint. Click on that and it's basically going to lock the position of those four vertices. So those can't go anywhere now. Uh, and now when I hit play, see the fabric falls down and hits the ground because it is long enough and just kind of swings there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but we need, now we need a, a breezy day so that this flag can actually blow in the wind and not just hang there. Uh, if I go back to the nucleus, we've got gravity and wind. So gravity 9.8, that is what gravity actually is. Negative 9.8 meters per second square is the force with which gravity pulls things towards the earth. Uh, but we also have wind speed and wind direction here. So I can up that wind speed to say 20 miles an hour. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's miles an hour, but it's 20 units. And we've got three values for wind direction, and that's, this is going to be x, y, and z. So a value of one in the wind direction, and the first box is going to be in the x positive x direction, which as it turns out is the direction we want. So I do that and I hit play, and now we can see that the flag is blowing in the wind. So uh, a couple things I want to do next. Uh, I think the first thing is let's add a material real quick. I'm going to right click and I will do uh, new material. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to stick with Maya materials. Uh, we can make it a Lambert. And then we're going to give it a texture. And let's go with a checkered texture. Uh, that will work. Hit six on the number pad. Here's our checkered texture. Okay, so we can hit play and we can see how that behaves. Okay, that. Uh, all right. So if you, uh, it doesn't look like it's double-sided in the in the viewport, but if you hit render, it is in fact double-sided. All right. Uh, so that is adding a texture. So now we can see the cloth to form. Um, last, maybe two things that I want to show is as this is blowing in the wind, it's going to kind of fall to a pattern. I also I want this to be a different material. So I'm going to go to my end cloth presets and let's go with silk. Okay, we'll go back to one, let it simulate. There we go. Okay. You see it's very stretchy. I can turn that down stretch resistance so I can I actually I guess that would be turning it up. And restart that and you can see it's I think I might be stretching a bunch. Here. Let's instead go to a t-shirt, so like a cotton material. Go back to ones that slightly stretchy with relatively damped motion, right? So it's not stretching quite as much. Um, I mean, you could also pin more than one vertex so that it's not stretching that much. But as this is going and blowing in the wind, the wind is constant, which means it's going to fall into this rhythm. Uh, if I select the nucleus, one thing we can do is go to my Actually, I think it's in the end cloth. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There we go. Okay, so in the uh, in the nucleus, and we've got and we've got wind speed, wind direction, wind noise is going to add some kind of randomness to it, so it's not quite so you know, mechanical. But the other thing that we can do is we can add an outside force. And that, uh, if we go to our effects menu and then we go to fields solvers, we can add some turbulence. So we add that turbulence field. Uh, it adds it at the origin, so then we need to move it up. So we'll move it right about here at the beginning of the flag. I'm going to bump up the magnitude. And uh, hit play. 
Yeah, it's just going to add a little bit of extra kind of randomness uh, to the flag. And maybe I'll move it in a little bit more. And I can turn up or down the frequency and the noise. Okay. So now we got kind of more interesting things happening here. I think the last thing that I want to do is the flag starts blowing and it's still perfectly straight at the beginning and then it doesn't, whoa, that's, that might be uh, a little too strong on the, oh yeah, I don't want a hundred, that's extreme. Um, I'll turn that down. Okay. But I don't want it to start perfectly straight. I want it to already look like a flag. So I'm going to move forward here to a frame that kind of looks like a flag already. And then I can go up to end cloth. And I can say uh, set rust to start shape. Oh, sorry, that's not. Clearly I don't have a ton of experience with end cloth. Uh, field solvers and uh, initial state. There we go set for selected. Okay, so now if I go to frame one, this is now where the flag is going to start. So it doesn't take, you know, 30, 40 frames to start looking like a flag. And that's still too stretchy. That's going to bother me. But um, so now it looks like a flag already. So if you're rendering, you know, your, your character and you want flags blowing in the background, you can get them started blowing, find their starting position, set it, and then it'll look like a flag the whole time. It won't, it won't take any time to kind of catch up. So there's a quick once over of end cloth. Obviously, there's a ton more you can do um, with cloth simulation. You can, you know, make a, a kind of a bulky shirt type form, turn on simulation, and let it kind of fall into your character and get, let those wrinkles naturally develop. And then you can freeze that uh, transformation just by duplicating it. And then you've got you know, believable wrinkles. And from there you can um, either leave that simulation on and actually render it that way, or you can use that as a sculpting base, or you can just leave it as is and, and you know, and call it good there. So a lot you can do with it. Hopefully this kind of opens up the world of simulation to you a little bit. Um, there's other fields that you can add. You can add vortices, um, adjust your gravity, you know, adjust, um, you know, how thick the air is, how it reacts to the air. Uh, and then there's also like the whole Bifrost engine, which I have zero experience with, but is awesome. And I strongly encourage you to look up some Bifrost examples on YouTube um, because they're great. So that's it for Uncloth. Um, next week, we're just going to review final projects. So this will be the last new video on this channel until the fall when we move into advanced and start talking about some organic modeling and some character animation and maybe some lip sync and maybe, maybe some 3D printing, uh, things of that nature. So thanks for watching.